up, fellows? This is Kevin at Cross Culture Christian helping you cross the gap between your life and the good life. I'm a youth pastor. For those of you who are new to the channel, but I also am teaching some Bible lessons, Bible classes to kids here at the at the school that's connected to uh, my church, the church that I work at, the Seventh Avenue Church here in Oceanside, California. So this is a series on worldview formation. The common misconception is that issues of worldview and epistemology and all these different subjects concerning philosophy and ethics and all that stuff is just too deep for the kids, for the middle schoolers. But then Barna came up with this research on Generation Z, you know, basically kids who were born post 96, and they said that worldview formation is pretty much done by the age of 13. By the age of 13, that's crazy, which means that even if these kids don't have the vocabulary to express why they think uh, what they think or why they believe what they believe, it's, they already have a pretty solid conception of what the world looks like or how they should see the world. So I'm like, you know what? Uh, let's just have an experiment. Maybe let me just pivot a little bit from my usual content and talk about worldview formation and apologetics and, the, and logic. So the kids hopefully might be able to better understand not just what to think, but how to think. Not just what to believe, but how their beliefs make sense. It's only a matter of time till these kids are gonna be confronted with other worldviews and other thoughts. And so if their Christian understanding and if their beliefs and their faith is based on their parents' faith or on some sort of a fleeting foundation, then when they are confronted with beliefs that may, may or may not be accurate, but have a robust kind of packaging, then they're gonna be intimidated. It's only a matter of time they, they go down the path of skepticism and doubt and stuff like that and uh, lose their faith altogether. So this is part one of a series that I'm doing on worldview formation. So check it out. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now, really quick, uh, what is a worldview, right? What do you, if you want to define worldview, what, what would it be? Give me some definitions. Yeah, what's up? Tell me. Okay, like a perspective, someone's perspective about yeah, anything. about anything. Shane. How you see the world. How you see the world. I like that. Anybody else? Like a belief, yeah. kind of. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, one more. Yeah, kind of like what Owen said, like something that is like a strong faith there. Like yeah. Faith in like science. Oh, interesting. So it's like something that you have a faith in, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think all you guys are actually not wrong. I mean, everybody has some, uh, some, some truth to what you guys are saying. But a worldview, a worldview for, for me, is a set of habit-forming beliefs that you have um, about how you see yourself, okay? So that's yourself, how you see others, and how you see what? the world, okay? And I like, really like what Shane said too. It's not what you see, but what you see with. Does that make sense? It's not what you see, but what you see with. The closest thing that you can think about is like a set of glasses, right? Like if you, uh, anybody, anybody except for, okay, so Olivia, Michael, you guys are the only ones who wear glasses, right? So it's like a, it's like a glass and, and, and if you wear contacts, that's, that's, that's the thing too. So it's like a, a, a thing that you put in your eyes so that you can see the world. And um, so that's, that's what uh, probably the, the closest illustration to what a, what a worldview is. But I also wanted to share with you this, and then we will close. I think a worldview is also like a, a GPS, okay? It's like a GPS. Like imagine having GPS on your phone. Uh, can you think of a time where you guys were last and you had to access oh, yeah. a, a GPS? Or, a, or an app, oh, yeah. like a Google Maps. Yeah. Or a, yeah. what, are, what are some GPS apps that you've used? If, you, if you've used, you don't, yeah, what's up? Oh, like Google Maps. Like Google Maps. Waze. Waze. Oh, Waze yeah. is the best, man. What's yours? I like Waze. Huh? 360 app. 360 app? Okay. Yeah. Live 360, what is that? It's like where you can see like, where like all your features. Oh, oh yeah, Levi, is that the one you showed me this, the other time? Oh, okay, that's cool, yeah, I like that. Okay, so here's a question. How do you know if a GPS is good? Boom, right there, simple. Uh, well, let's do this. So, oh, that's so nice. Okay, so it works. Basic. Like a, a GPS is a GPS is good if 
if, if it works, but not just works, but it has to work with uh, anyone, any time, and also any what? Where. Exactly. Any time, anywhere, okay? And with any one. So that's the first thing. Any, any other things about a good GPS? A good GPS. Yeah. Okay, so, so a good GPS you're saying gives you the fastest route, right? Do you think, yeah, okay, okay, that's, that's, def that's definitely a, a feature of it, yeah? Uh, Levi? Um, it can be used anywhere? Yeah, so you can be, so, so that, that, that's good too, that's the next one I had. That uh, it is usable. So it's not just that it works, but it is uh, usable. You know, it can be used anywhere with anybody at any time. There's, I mean, this, these two kind of looks the same, but they're actually two different things, right? It, it works, but it's also usable. Like, for example, you can have an app, right, a GPS app, but if it's all in, like, code and, like, in Chinese or, like, a language that you don't understand or whatever, maybe if you, if you understand Chinese, that's awesome. But, like, if it's in a different language, it works, but can you use it? No. It's hard, right, unless you toggle the language feature, right? And the other thing, which is something that I actually, um, the, probably the biggest reason, or a uh, very good thing that uh, I'm, I'm waiting for this reason, uh, the, about a good GPS, yeah. It takes you to the right place. Very close. It takes you to the right place, yeah. Um, it, it, um, it leads you where you want to go. OK, it leads you where he wants to go. I think everybody's kind of coming at it from the different angles. Uh, Jack in the box. Okay, it shows you the way, yeah? It's reliable. It's reliable. Okay, all, I think all of those, all of those are really good answers. Um, it is accurate. About what? About the world. Right, like you can have an app that takes you, uh, Google Maps, well, let's just say, no, Google Maps is pretty good, but if you have an app that's like, shows you, it's supposed to give you the GPS, but, it, but the map on the app is very different from the actual way the world is set up, you are not just gonna hurt yourself, but you're also gonna hurt other people, right? Bec or you, at, 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 the very, at the very best, you might get lost, but at the very worst, you can actually do some really, really like harm actually to other people, right? So, um, so a worldview, a good worldview, kind of has all of these, all of these concepts. That it works anytime, anywhere, with anybody. That it's usable by any time, anyone, and everywhere. And it's also accurate about what the world is and what the reality looks like, right? Um, so that's like that's what, it, what that's what a worldview is. Um, a worldview is important because it it shows us. Uh, where we are going, the direction of the world, and also helps us, and this is a little different from what the GPS actually does, and GPS doesn't do this, but a worldview, an actual worldview, helps us to know what's right and wrong with the world, what's right and wrong with other people, and what's also right and wrong where? You know, in us, right? Now, if I were to ask you, if someone would come to you and say, hey, what is Christianity, okay? What would you say? Christianity. How would you answer them? It's like, hey, what is Christianity? Someone comes and say, and say what is, uh, yeah. How would you define it? Jace and then uh, Titus. Um, the belief about the Bible and Jesus Christ and the Holy Okay, you said belief, okay? You're not wrong. Anybody else? Yeah. Titus. Same thing. same thing, okay. Levi. Huh? Faith. What? Faith. Faith, okay. That's good. They're similar, but slightly different. Anybody else? What is Christianity? Someone comes to you and says, what, what do you say? Yeah. I think you're not, you're not all, none, of the, none of you guys are wrong. <coughs> Path. OK, OK, OK. Maybe I'll take one more. Uh, destination. Destination. Nate. Worldview. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, right, Christianity 
is not just a religion, is not just a belief, is not just a faith, but it's a way that you see the world around you. I want you to get this very important concept because too often we feel like, oh, it's just something that my parents are doing, hey, whatever, I can choose not to do it. Or, or I can choose to, to do it, right? Which is all valid choices. But at the end of the day, I want you to know that Christianity uh, and stuff like atheism, Hinduism, all these other religions, they are all not just religions, but they're actually ways of seeing the what? The world. The world. But not just the world, but yourself, others, and the world, yeah. <laughs> and if you get this, guys, I think it'll actually make sense because one of the questions that you guys have asked me is, hey, how do you know that Christianity is true? How do you know if the Bible is true? How do you know? And the way to judge all of that is to actually, or to, to, to get to those questions, is to actually talk about, talk about this first. Talk about what a worldview is and then go from there, right? Um, cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know in the comments down below if I made sense, if I didn't. Uh, let me know how I can improve this. Yeah. Till next time, this is Kevin at Cross Culture Christian helping you cross the gap between your life and the good life. Take care and God bless.